Hey guys, today we're going to look at the difference between doing a long-term rental versus a short-term rental or think Airbnb. So I'm going to walk you through the different numbers in purchase price, down payment, closing costs, what you would rent the house out for, and ultimately how much cash flow you would get as a long-term rental. And then we're going to do the same example on a similar type property for the same purchase price and ultimately what you would cash flow renting on Airbnb. So first we have LTR, stands for long-term rental. Let's assume we were purchase, purchase price of 500K. Now there's different types of loans you can leverage of course, but just for the sake of the example, we're gonna assume a 20% down payment. So we got down payment at 100K. Again, just an example, it's easy round numbers. Now let's assume you have closing costs at about 15,000, all right? So all in, we're gonna be at $115,000. Assume you don't need to do any rehab or remodel on the property. Now, if you had $500,000 property, 100K down, you have a mortgage on $400,000 principal balance at a 7.5% interest rate or so, along like, PITI would total right about 3,200. So let's just say mortgage, 3,200. So for this type of property, you're probably gonna be renting out a whole house for let's just say 3,500 a month. So you would aim for a cash flow of about 3,500 a month or excuse me, cash flow about $300 a month. So if you can rent it out to a tenant, let's say for 12 months, and the monthly rent is 3,500, we're left over with 300 a month. Now, of course, we have to budget for things like CapEx and vacancy, and vacancy alone, let's just say we're budgeting 200 a month. And what is vacancy? So if you rent this place out for a year and then the tenant moves out, let's say it takes you an extra month to fill that unit, that is vacancy. You have to eat that cost of the mortgage and other holding costs. So vacancy, let's just say is 200 a month. All right, so we're left with $300 less vacancy. In, in this case, we're only cash flowing like 100 bucks a month. And that's not even including budgeting for CapEx. So cash flow, 100 a month, or cash flow would be 1,200 a year. So $100 a month on $115,000 invested. Pretty poor return on your money. Now, the higher interest rates have pretty much destroyed all returns for long-term rental investors. A lot of people used to shoot for like an eight to 10 or 12% cash and cash return. You're not seeing that. If you're investing in long-term rentals, you're essentially investing for the tax benefit and for future appreciation and, and future rent increases. So I would not expect to make a ton of money in the first five to eight years of owning a long-term rental. Now, if we do the same example as a short-term rental, remember this is Airbnb, we're renting per night, not per month. Let's say the same purchase price, 500K, same down payment, 100K, closing costs, 15K. And remember, because it's a short-term rental, we also have to pay for furniture. So um, furniture, we'll just say 20,000 to furnish this place. So all in, we're at what? $135,000. Again, just nice, easy round numbers for you guys. Mortgage, same thing, 3,200. Now we don't have monthly rent, but we have average daily rate of $300 a day. And then the occupancy, remember we're not forecasting vacancy, we're actually doing quite the reverse. We're forecasting occupancy. How many days of the year do we expect to be rented divided by 365 days? That yields our occupancy rate. So, Remember, mortgage 3,200, average daily rate 300. Let's say occupancy rate is around 
which would be pretty common for a well-run rental in most markets. And at 75%, we'll just say 30 days on average per month times 0.75, that's 22 and a half days. So 75%. And that gives us a revenue of 300 multiplied by the 22 and a half days rented. And that would be $6,750. And then we do have other expenses, right? Other than just the mortgage, because we, we are now paying for the utility bills as the short-term rental operator, cleaning, cleaning fees and such. So let's say it's another OPEX is 1500. All right, so if we're gonna take the $6,750 minus the mortgage, minus the OPEX, we're left with cash flow, $2,050 a month. Multiply that by 12, you're cash flowing $24,600 per year. And you guys may think, oh, no way, that's not possible. I shoot for 25% cash on cash return for my short-term rental investments. We've achieved that, I think, all but maybe one property, uh, which we were still high cash flow there. And the highest we've seen is about 100%, which is insane. So 25% is very realistic. 24,600 divided by the 135 invested is an 18.22% cash on cash much higher rate of return on your money than over here, which is near non-existent and probably zero or net negative cash flow in most cases. This is the power of investing in short-term rentals. We invest for cash flow and we get all of the long-term benefits of holding real estate. We get depreciation, we get appreciation, which is just icing on the cake in my opinion. And the tenants, right, are paying us to stay in our property and ultimately that is what's paying the mortgage off. So we get principal pay down on the loan. We get all of those things in this side. In this side, we really don't get any cash flow into a year's five, maybe eight and beyond when the rent year over year increases enough to yield us a higher cash flow. This is the power of short-term rentals. How, much, how quickly could you replace your nine to, five, nine to five income if you had you know, a few of those units? If you had five of these, your cash flow in over $10,000 a month. That replaces most incomes from everyone watching, I would suppose. So if you guys want to learn how to do this strategy and do it really well, click on the description below. I'll drop some information on BNB Investor Academy if you guys have interest in it. Otherwise, just drop some comments and happy to answer those as we go. And if you guys are not subscribed, that's what keeps this channel alive. So if you watch this video, please subscribe.